Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and I have a question and answer video for you today. Some coffee. So I posted out on my channel. Oh, I just spilled coffee. Oops, I have a duster, we'll use that. I posted out on my channel today, uh, the other day asking for some questions and so now I'm gonna answer them for you. We're also gonna put on some moisturizer because my hands are dry today. I've been doing too much. Ooh, I have you precariously sitting on top of some Lysol wipes, leaning on my monitor. I gotta get a new tripod for my desk. I have a different setup and I lost, what I used to do is hook you on my laptop, but that doesn't work anymore. All right, I'm putting some hand lotion on because dry. Here we go. I have some questions for you. And let's start. Kathy C asks, how much or how do I come up with my crafting ideas and creative ways of crafting? And I don't I don't really know that answer. I mean, I think it's just how I'm wired. I do um I do spend a lot of time looking at Pinterest and different ideas for seasonal stuff and then I take a base idea and I kind of throw my own um spin on it. I wish I had a better answer for you. Um, you know, it's just, I, I imagine things in my head and I think I've always had a good imagination and, you know, I figure I can try and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So there's that. Sandy asks, which way do I like my hair better, longer or short? Um, yes, I like it short and then I get tired of it short and then I grow it out and then I'll probably get tired of it longer and then I'll cut it short again. I love, and you'll know this answer because I'm gonna say it many times, I love the change. You know, like I love right now embracing my curls, although I didn't do much today because it's very humid out. Um, and I like the look of it longer, but then I'll get tired of dealing with it and then I will cut it short again. I think I've had it short for like five or six years now if I had to guess. And it's super easy when it's short and when it's longer. So I'm trying to keep it like at this length and with layers so my curls stay because I do have naturally curly hair. And as I'm getting older, my curls are coming out more. So that's fun too. Okay, Tammy Jo asks, um, oh, she'd like to see some diabetic recipes. Okay, I can get on that. I do. So keto is diabetic. It's diabetic friendly. It's not the diabetic diet, but it's diabetic friendly because they are low carb, low sugar. And I try to go with more lean protein. So there's that, but yeah, I can put some more stuff up for diabetes. Um, Amy G says she would love to learn more about my age, siblings, what are my favorite things to do? Um, I am 51, I'll be 52 this year. I have four brothers that are all older than me. I have a half sister that is younger than me through my father. And I have three cousins who are all older than me as well. And you'll hear me talking about my cousins frequently because we're pretty close. Um, I lost my second to oldest brother. I was 12, sorry, I had a cat fur flying around. I was 12, he was 17. He was killed in a accident in Texas where he worked at a job. And, um, but that was a long time ago. And let's see, my favorite things to do, I love, I just love a lots of stuff. I love crafting. I love riding my bike. I love traveling. And I'm gonna have a lot of trips coming up. I think I have three nice fun trips booked to bring us along on. Plus I'm going to Myrtle Beach soon to see my brother. So one local trip is in a couple days actually. I'm not sure when you'll be seeing this, but I'll be gone for a few days and that's local in the, in the United States. And then in October, I have a trip planned to England, to London at specifically. And then in next year in May and October, I'm going to Canada both months. So that's exciting. I love traveling and I'm so excited to get back to it. I love my pets. I love reading and cross stitch right now. And I love knitting. I love creating that creative process. Um, I love talking, if you haven't noticed. I love making my YouTube channels. And honestly, I'm pretty much what you see on camera. This is me, this is how I am in real life. I'm, I get excited about things and I love doing it. 
Um, I don't know if there's anything. Oh, I didn't. I haven't shared that my I had lost a brother. Um, I have one brother that lives in Massachusetts, one lives in South Carolina, and one lives here. And then my half sister lives here in Ohio as well. So there's that. Um, I love. I just love being organized too, and I love my planner. But I have lots of hobbies. I love sports. I love watching football. I work part time at if you're not, if you're new to my channel. I work part time at the university, the Ohio State University, for the Department of Athletics. So I work at the Schottenstein Center, where men's basketball, women's basketball, men's hockey play, and then concerts and special events. Like yesterday, I worked at high, uh, the college graduation. And then I work at the stadium, which is called The Shoe. And there I work football and we also have concerts over there. Over the summer, I work the Buckeye Country Fest. And next month, excuse me, next month starts football season. And the first five games are at home. And I'll be doing the same position the same department, I do safety team it's called, and we like our roving guest services. We walk around, we answer questions, we call on people if they're having distress, we can get help to them, or you know, if you're doing something you shouldn't do, we let you know that stop it, so we don't have to get you out of the arena, or out of the stadium. This, um, uh, t this coming up season, I'll be the supervisor of the team, and so yeah, it'll be fun. So I do that part time. Um, I have my YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay. Karen B asks, "What are my oh favorite places to eat when I lived in Worcester?" The Boynton, B O Y N T O N, was a favorite of ours. It's on Main Street. I think it's Main Street in Worcester. It's been a long time since I've been to Worcester, but that was a favorite restaurant kind of slash bar. Uh, I have Luna today. I'm like, girl, what you in? Uh, we used to go there for drinks in the evening and grab a quick bite to eat. And it was fun. And it's been there. I think it's still there. But enjoy and have fun at the Cape. I love Martha's Vineyard. I love Cape Cod. When I used to live in Massachusetts, we would, um, in the summertime, drive down to the Cape. And I loved it. I love the ocean. Um, hi. Annette asked, do I have any tips or tricks about my game hi about my game plan for christmas shopping and getting all the holiday things done for me my biggest game plan and my biggest tip is i make lists i i even have behind me or in the other office i can't remember other room i have an ins i have an insert for my planner uh, this is Luna, Sarah's dog. She's visiting for a few minutes or this afternoon or overnight. I never know. She's here. We love her. Um, so what I do, and I shop year round for the most part. I don't, I don't actively shop for Christmas, you know, until about now, this time of year. But if I come across something that's a good deal and I think I have somebody on my list, I will absolutely pick it up. Like my one brother, I have him all, I'm all shopped for him because I found... <laughs> I cannot with these animals. I found some great deals on some clothes and things that I know he needs and would like. And so I picked him up and he's done. Come on, girlfriend. We're not staying up on my desk, but thank you. Okay, there you go. And um, then I make a, a planner spread for usually I will start mine. My Sorry, I haven't brought my new chair up here yet. Um, I'll start with like November, December and I lay out an agenda and then I will put on my planner when I want to have specific things done. Like I decorate my house around Thanksgiving. That's when I do it. And so that's on my planner and I usually take the Friday after off and that's the day I will put up my tree and get my house decorated. Um, in my office here, I have a box going and so once, once I start Christmas shopping, I make my list. And on my list, I'm trying to make this not confusing, but on my list, I put everybody that I need to purchase a gift for. And that's how I would start. Take a notebook and I would start my niece, my brothers, my their wives, any nieces and nephews, cousins, friends, in-laws. I write it out. I don't so much budget for everybody, but in my mind, I know approximately what I want to spend, but more importantly, I want to get them something that they will appreciate. So I make my list 
And as I buy gifts, I write it on my list so I'm not duplicating anything and I mark them off the list. My mental goal is to have Christmas shopping done, the majority at least done in November or the beginning of November. It just really depends though. But list making and meals, I write out the meals I wanna make and then I'll write out you know, what ingredients. If I'm going to bake cookies for my neighbors, it goes on my list and it goes on my planner and it's cookies. What, what types of cookies I want to make? What ingredients do I need to buy? What packaging am I going to put it in? And so I will take one idea and fully plan it. And that's, this is not for everybody. This is just answering the question, but how I do it. And this is literally how I get ready for the holidays. And I, since, you know, we're pretty small family anymore, as far as who I need to buy gifts for. A couple of my cousins, I give them cash because that's what they want. You know, they're that age where cash comes in handy. And then I write down ideas and I roll with it. So it's kind of, it's just prior planning. Prior planning. So I would say start with at Dollar Tree, get yourself a notebook. And then I do a page for, you know, couple pages of what I'm buying for who then I'll flip it and I have a couple pages of food products what do I need to buy grocery wise and when should I start buying grocery stuff you know butter freezes so maybe if I'm making a lot of cookies I'll start buying butter now you know things like that then I'll make my Christmas card list and when do I want to mail them out start working on my Christmas card list then I will you know flip a page flip two pages whatever and I'll make another list of any decorations or any craft projects I'm going to make for this upcoming season and then as I go through my list because I'm a big list maker and I love ticking things off as I complete these items I'll check them off or if a plan changes I just mark through it and put my new plan into place so even though I make a list and I'm very I really like to keep to my list. I'm also flexible enough that if something's a change, then I just mark it off and I re regroup, if that makes sense. So I would start with a list of everybody you're gonna buy a present for. There's my answer. Because that was a long-winded one. Melissa B asks, uh, oh, question is, sorry, I had to open it up. Oh, she's trying to get glued paper off a big lots sign. She used the heat gun. It's not wood. It's more like MDF. So if I'm thinking about what you're doing correctly, it's a piece of MDF and there's something glued like the design or something is glued to the front. The way I've had success with that is sandpaper. Like I have a sanding a power sander and I would go over and take it all off. Um, you can use Goo Gone. I would just use a little touch at a time and see if it takes it off and so you can get up there and pick at it and then sand it. The other thing that I commonly do is just turn it over and I use the backside because usually the MDF, if they're a thick wood, the, the paper is glued to one side and the back is plain. But if let's say you sand the back and you just can't get it off, you can trace out your sign, trace it out, get a piece of cardstock and glue the cardstock down of a matching color, a contrasting color, and then de decorate on top of that. So if this was my sign and there was something glued to it and I just can't get it off, I would cut a piece of paper that's the same size and I would attach it with like Mod Podge, let that fully dry. And then I'm decorating on top of this piece of cardstock. It's kind of, excuse me. Hi, let's not dig the carpet, but thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, I hope that helped. I don't, without a visual. And if you have, if you would like, go to the Facebook group and post a picture of what you're trying to get the goo off of. And we can all try to help you there as well. Because that's perfectly what I think. Uh, excuse me, sir. Sir, nobody wants to see your eyeballs. And that's Wellington. Come here. Sorry about that. Come here. You want to say hi to our friends? And we have Mr. Wellington. He has been not feeling great the last few days, but he seems to be perking up. For those that don't know, he is my old cat. He's my old cat. He's my senior. He's 14. He's got some asthma, and I think he just hasn't been feeling right. But he seems to be better today. So, Melissa, take a picture of what you're trying to get off and bring it to the group, because we can maybe 
do a little hive mind and try to help you get that off. But I wouldn't be afraid to try a little bit of Goo Gone. If, if all else fails and it ruins it, you can always paint over the Goo Gone as well. Or take a, that piece of paper and glue it over the what's under it. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, my favorite season. So I don't really have a favorite season. I love the change in season. See, there's my trend. I like the change in my hair. I like the change in season. So by the time summer's done, I'm done and I'm ready for fall. And I love fall and I love all things fall. And then I love winter time and I want the first snow to happen. And then I love it when it's cold and crisp and I can have a fire. And then I get tired of Chris winter and I'm like, oh, summer's here and I'm ready for the hot days of summer. So I just love the whole seasonal change. Um, I get bored easily if you haven't been able to tell. I'm easily bored. And I like the change in the seasons. So that is a cool one. And I love getting out all my different clothes. Um, and Christine also asks if I've had any happy romances. I have. I have had some long-term relationships. They haven't worked out and I'm okay with that. You know, I just feel like maybe I'm destined. This is my, you know, and I'm not unhappy about my life by any stretch of the imagination. But I think maybe this is just my destiny, you know. Maybe, I, maybe I'm afraid of people in long-term relationships. I'm not sure. It could be me. Hmm. But yes, I have had some long-term relationships. Um. Oh, Tracy uh, B. asks, how did I get Alex in Wellington? So Wellington, who you just saw, he's 14. I got him from a friend of mine who, um, oh, he left the hair behind. A friend of mine who had a cat that had kittens and I went to their house and picked him out. And then I had to wait for him to be old enough. So he, I picked him out when he was like a week old and I couldn't have him until he was weaned from the mom. But I brought him home and he was this tiny tot. If I remember, I'll post some pictures in the group he was this tiny tot little baby that fit in my hand. He was so cute. Um, yeah, so I've had him since he was pretty much born. And Alex, I adopted, I brought him home on February 3rd of 2018. So my mom passed away on February 3rd, conven conveniently or coincidentally, I suppose, uh, February 3rd of 2017. And uh, at the time we just had Wellington and my mom was home with him all day cause she lived with me and he got really sad. Like I was working a lot and he was just sad and depressed and mopey around the house. And about a year later I decided it was time to rest, you know, to get another cat, but I didn't want a kitten because I didn't have a lot of time. And um, Sarah, who's a teacher, one of her co-teachers, showed her a picture of Alex who was here in Columbus that her son and daughter-in-law had rescued. So he was on the street and they brought him in and got him fixed. And then I adopted him through that cat rescue and I brought him home. And I was very lucky that the two of them got along as well as they do. I mean, they get along very well. I have very little issues with the two of them other than Alex is very hungry all the time and Wellington won't eat, but they, you know, I was I was lucky to be able to introduce two male cats, one a three-year-old who lived on the streets and one who was very spoiled and always had a house. So the luck was on my side, but that's how I got them. So they're both technically rescues. I mean, I adopted Wellington from a friend and I adopted Alex from a pet rescue. And I, I very much encourage you to adopt and adopt older cats. He was three, he was still playful when I brought him home, but he wasn't a kitten and kittens are bad. They climb things and they're bad. So I was like, yeah, I'll take the three-year-old. And it was a, the best decision I made. I love them both dearly. And, and you have a kitten, Sigmund. Oh, I love that name. Mary S. asks, do I live or shop near Amish counties in Ohio? Um, Not technically, no. I live in Columbus area, like I live in the city. And Pickerington where I live even has some rural areas. Pickerington where I live is very much in the city. Now, 20 minutes from here is a Amish shop that I go to and Amish country is within an hour's drive of me. And honestly, I could run into the Amish anywhere and Mennonites anywhere around here. But Amish, true Amish country is about an hour and a half to two hours from where I live. 
but I do enjoy going up and we'll do it a couple a couple times a year we go up around fall is a great time to go it's not so hot so we go shopping up there but yes i do visit but i don't live near the amish um kelly k would like to know what is my career um i work for a bank in asset recovery so i work in a small department and i manage five people and yeah, it's just at a uh, Huntington Bank is the company that I work for here. Their their footprint is mainly in Ohio and the surrounding states, but we are moving west currently. So like into Wisconsin, um, Minnesota, that direction. Yep, so I work for a bank full time. And the last question is Cindy, Cind, Cindy, come on, Cind, Cindy. Why do I keep wanting to call you Sydney? Cindy. Um, she said she's cross stitched for many years and would love to start again. Um, she doesn't have any local craft stitching stores. So where to, the, what are my favorite online cross stitching sites? Well, I talk about Evertote in Canada a lot. Um, and they're linked usually in my description box. I love getting stuff from her. Um, I will say if you're in the United States and you're looking for like a lot of different varieties. So Carolina Evertote carries uh, Leo and Roxy Floss Co., which is a very specific floss brand, and she carries some charts and she makes bags. She is a small independent shop, so she doesn't carry everything, like a ton of stuff. If you're looking for getting started and you're looking for more variety, like a broader variety, I would say one, two, three stitch, literally the numbers, one, two, three stitch um, is a great resource. I shop from them fairly regularly. They have a ton of patterns, a ton of floss, all different, even DMC. Um, they have a lot of the different indie dyers and they have fabric. And what you can do is if you find a pattern that you like, you can just click the box underneath and it will load everything you need for that pattern in your cart. So it's a little more, not more convenient. It's a little different than Carolina Evertoe, which again, I love her shop, just a different setup. Um, I know the Fat Quarter shop sells some cross stitching stuff. I do buy some fabric from them, but I haven't really bought any cross stitching stuff from them. But there's also a lot of like independent little shops. The Kitten Stitcher is one. Abby Topknot Stitcher has an online store. Um, I would suggest getting on the Floss Tube on YouTube. Put in Floss Tube and um, you'll see tons of different uh, Floss Tubers doing their videos and they talk about different little shops. And depending where you're at in the country, um, there might be something a little more local to you that you would like to support. Like here in Ohio, there's Keepsake. I know they ship around. Um, who else is there? There's shops out west. Like the the names are are leaving my, my brain. But I like one, two, three, stitch. I like um, Everto. Those are my favorites. And that was the question. What are my favorites? Um, but I have a huge supply of DMC floss and I have a lot of um, Leo and Roxy. And so what I tend to do is if I get a pattern and I don't have the color it calls to, I just sub something in. Like I just grab a color because I don't have time for messing around. And I also have a local needle shop to me. Well, it's about a half an hour from me, but I don't think they ship. So that is everything. I hope that was informative for you. I like to put these out. I think I put one out exactly a year ago. Um, my next video up should be a Dollar Tree haul. And I will try to get some footage of my vacation at the beach. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you have a fantastic day and I will talk with you later. Bye.